Kids at Fellowship. This is our 20th video of Wednesday Kids at Fellowship, believe it or not. And we will continue to do these until we are face to face. With thanks for all those who participated in summer coinage and the shoe that grows. We'll give you an idea of how many coins we collected and how many shoes we were able to give to those children who are in poverty. Thank you once again. This is our last bug lesson. I know. So next week, there will be no teaching video next Wednesday. We're going to take a week off and get ready for Pack Group and Tuesday Kids of Fellowship and Wednesday Kids of Fellowship video. We'll continue to do those, as I said, but we'll be back with a video August 26th. So be looking for that with a brand new series called YOLO. Oh, can't wait to find out what that is. We'll be looking at the book of Esther. Kind of excited for that. This is our last chance to check in with Mosquito. Let's do it. Hey everybody, my name is Mo, Mo Skeeto, and I'm making this video in hopes that you'll be interested in my new virtual reality video game called Splat. Some games have you finding fake bugs and creatures, but mine, you're finding real creatures, bugs to be precise. The slogan is, gotta catch them all, entirely. entirely. I had to add that last word in for legal reasons. Anyway, each bug kit comes with bug catchers, a bug guide, and a bed bug. Huh, I feel like I've been looking for you, like like I've been searching for you, like I've been trying to... Nah, it's just a bug. Today, we'll be doing another demonstration on how to play the game. See, with these state-of-the-art bug catchers, you'll find all sorts of bugs, which is a goal of the game, but the ultimate goal is to find the bed bug. <sighs> See, when I was little, my mama used to say, Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs. <laughs> ah! Oh no, I had the bed bug and I threw it away. The rarest bug in the game. Oh bed bug, now I'll know none of your secrets. Where you work, <laughs> what your favorite movie is. <laughs> ah, what's that smell? What is it? Is it the dirty socks I carry around? No? Is it the old cheese? No? What is it? Skunk tail? More dirty socks? An onion? What is that smell? Oh, I think I see movement over there. You know what that means. Gotta catch them all! Entirely! Here we go! Let's see what's in this one. Oh, it's the dirty socks from earlier. And this one is empty. What about this one? Oh, it looks like we got something. Maybe it's the bed bug. Oh, no, it's not the bed bug. It's a... Ugh! I know where that smell is coming from. It's a stink bug. These bugs are small, but they can make a real stink. They release this stink when they're afraid or they don't want other bugs around them. We can be like these bugs sometimes. Well, our bad attitudes make people not want to be around us. And Jesus says to love others. We should always have a good attitude. There's another example of a little bug teaching a big lesson. You're going to learn more about choosing a good attitude in your lesson today. It's going to be amazing. Well, I got to get going. Whoa, my game got fully funded. Thanks, Grandma. Well, I got to go start mass producing Splat. Until next time, say it with me. Gotta catch them all! Entire. Man, this sounds like a lesson that stinks. P.U. A big lesson from a stink bug. But before we do that, what's up? What's up, what's up? 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 What's up?
Oh yeah! What's up everybody? It's me! It's the SKI to the double T L A F. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to get busy telling you what's up. Today, we are talking about how not to be a stink bug. Pee you! So every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I will choose a good attitude. Some days you can wake up and things just are not going your way. You know, like you may have a bad hair day, or maybe your dog ate your math homework, or maybe your little sister used your favorite video game without asking for permission, and then she broke it. Ooh, I'm telling mom. Well, when those things happen, it's easy to choose a stinky attitude. You know, you stomp and you yell and you act like a big old baby. <laughs> Boo -hoo, give me my bottle. But that is not what God wants you to do. You got to choose to have the same attitude that Jesus had. You got to choose a good attitude, not a stanky one. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I will choose a good attitude and that is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior. Skittles is out, baby. my only protection. I thought you said you weren't talking to me. Uh, I'm not, so leave me alone. Thaddeus, does this have something to do with the bug that we're talking about this week? Maybe. Uh, hey, why did you do that? To get you to talk to me. Why are you so mad? Because tonight you're talking about a creepy, crawly, nasty, stinky, little, ew, stink bug. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Stink bugs are kind of gross, but we can still learn something important from them. Like what? I mean, how to spray people with the word of God, or how to, to stink for Jesus. Whatever. Okay, no, nothing like that. We're not teaching people to act like a stink bug. We're telling them to not be a stink bug. Well, that's good, I guess. I mean, how do people act like stink bugs? If I ever saw a person do what stink bugs do, whew, I'm gonna stay away from them. <laughs> well, people act like stink bugs by having a stinky attitude being mean, being angry, or sarcastic all the time. Well, what's wrong with being upset about something? Well, it's fine to have bad days because those bad days will happen. And getting upset about something is okay. It's a natural response. But it's no excuse for being mean or sarcastic with people all the time. Oh yeah? Well, I just can't help it. I mean, I was just made this way. See, that's an excuse, Thaddeus. That's an excuse for lots of people. But it's not true. Your attitude is your choice. You can't control what happens to you in this life, but you can control how you react to it. Okay, okay, so wait. So, so like, you say you wanted to act better, like, I mean, not me act better, like, maybe I have a friend because, you know, I'm funny and amazing, but, but what if somebody, like my friend, not me, like, didn't have many friends because no one wanted, no one wanted to be around me, I mean, him, my best friend, and I, and because my best friend is mean and angry all the time, and, you know, them, my best friend, not me, I'm not talking about me, um, you know, could, could, how could they, like, change 
their attitude. I'm glad you asked. Follow Jesus' example. The Bible is full of examples of how Jesus having a good attitude in all kinds of circumstances and tough situations. Well, that's encouraging, I guess. C can I please leave now because it's kind of starting to really stink a little bit. Um, that's probably because of that stink bug on your uh, shoulder. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, keep a good attitude. Keep a good. No, stay, stay calm. No, no, I can't do it. Ah! Bye, guys. story. Go ahead and grab your Bibles. We're going to be looking at the story of Job. Job in the Old or New Testament. Now, some of you are going to look at it and say, that looks like Job. But actually, it's a man's name, and his name is Job. And it is in the Old Testament. Exactly. Okay. Actually, it's the 18th book of the Old Testament, but it's very, very easy to find. You know how we hold our Bibles like this and we go right there in the middle and 90% of the time you're at the book of Psalm. Well, guess what? The book before Psalm is just flip that way toward the beginning and there it is. Job. The book of Job. Pretty easy to find, right? We're going to be looking at the whole book because we're going to look at the whole story and the whole life of Job. It's interesting because many scholars believe that Job is the oldest book of the Bible. That's just kind of an interesting fact to know. Well, listen, let's go ahead and find Job chapter 1 right there, right the first book before Psalm. Okay, chapter 1, first three verses. You got it? Good. There was a man in the country of Uz named Job. Now, he was a man of perfect integrity. Wow, he sounds amazing. Who feared God and turned away from evil. He is amazing. He had seven sons and three daughters. His estate included 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large number of servants, those people who worked for him. Job was the greatest man among all the people of the East. Man, Job sounds like a very interesting person with a lot of possessions. Sounds like he's really been blessed by God in his life with a lot of possessions and a large family. Okay, And he, like I said, turned away from evil. So God was blessing him in that. Now let's go to verse 6 of chapter 1. One day the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan, the devil, the web of temptation guy, right, also came with them. And the Lord asked Satan, Where have you come from? From ro roaming through the earth, Satan answered him, and walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? No one else on earth is like him. Once again, God says, A man of perfect integrity who fears me and turns away from evil. Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Haven't you placed a hedge around him, his household, and everything he owns? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and strike everything he owns and he will surely curse you to your face. Verse 12. Very well, the Lord told Satan. Everything he owns is in your power. However, you must not lay a hand on Job himself. So Satan left the Lord's presence. So what is happening with this, okay? Job has all these possessions, 
all these oxen and donkeys and, and these servants, these sheep and camels and everything and his large family and he's, he's, Satan is saying he has all that and he worships you and he follows you because you blessed him with all of that. You take that away and he will curse you. And so the Lord said, okay, and gave Satan permission to take all that away and find out. So let's find out what happens with Job and what decisions Job makes. So here we go with verse, let's just go with 13. One day, Job was there and a messenger came to Job and reported, while the oxen were plowing, and the donkeys gazing nearby, the Sabaeans stooped down and took them away. They struck down the servants with the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Wow, listen to that. All his oxen and all his donkeys, they're gone, taken away, and those shepherds and those who were watching those oxen and those donkeys, are killed also except for that one who was able to give the message but it's only beginning right there while he was still speaking that first messenger another messenger came and reported a lightning storm struck from heaven and it burned up the sheep and the servants and devoured them and i alone have escaped to tell you once again, there it is, all the sheep gone, okay? Devoured by this lightning storm. Wow, and the shepherds of those sheep, all gone. That means sheep are gone, camels are gone, donkeys are gone, everything is gone. And while he's still talking, listen to verse 17. The messenger was still speaking when yet Another came and reported. The Chardians formed three bands, made a raid on the camels, and took them away. They struck down the servants with the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Now the camels are all gone, and those who were taking care of the camels are all gone. Job is losing everything one by one. The sheep gone, camels gone, oxen gone, donkeys gone. All the servants who served for and watched those animals, all gone. And yet, while he was still speaking, here we go, verse 18. He was still speaking when another messenger came and reported, this is where it gets serious. Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and suddenly, a powerful wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. And it collapsed on the young people so that they all died. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Now, everything is gone. Not only the sheep and camels and oxen and donkeys, but now all of his sons and daughters and maybe grandchildren, the Bible doesn't tell us, but they're all gone. Now it gets very interesting to see how Job reacts. So verse 20, then Job stood up, tore his robe, which was a sign of grief and mourning. He shaved his head, he fell to the ground, and the Bible says he worshiped. He worshiped the God above and all his stuff are gone. Why? Because God was still more important than possessions and even family. Job said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will leave this life. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Praise the name of Yahweh. Verse 22, throughout all of this, Job did not sin or blame God for anything. This is an amazing story of how Job reacted. 
okay? And we're going to be talking about attitude. We're going to be looking at Job's attitude when we get into the, less, the Bible lesson. Okay? So let's continue to see what is happening because he's lost everything, but he's still a great example for us to look at. Chapter 2, verse 3. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? No one else, no one else on earth is like him. A man of perfect integrity who fears God and turns away from evil. He still retains his integrity even after all that. Even though you incited me against him to destroy him without just cause. Goes on verse 4 of chapter 2. Skin for skin, Satan answered the Lord. A man will give up everything he owns in exchange for his life. But stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones and he will surely curse you to your face. Verse 6 of chapter 2, Very well, the Lord told Satan, He is in your power, only spare his life. And so Satan left the Lord's presence and infected Job with terrible boils from the sole of his foot to the top of his head. And then Job took a piece of broken pottery to scrape himself because it was so painful. These huge, terrible sores were all over Job's body. So now everything's been taken away from him and Satan and now is affecting his body and putting him in a lot of, lot of pain. And you would think, man, Job is in a tough situation. And the one person that could be there for him, the one human being that could be there for him was his wife, but then we find in verse 9, his wife said to him, ah, Do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. Wow, the one person that could support him and help him walk through this terrible time now is even saying, his wife is even saying, Curse God and just die. And Job says in verse 10 of chapter 2, You speak as a foolish woman speaks, he told her. Should we accept, accept only good from God and not adversity? Throughout all this, Job did not sin in what he said. This is amazing. All this has happened to Job. His wife has turned away from him in the next chapters up until 13 and further than that we find three friends that are trying to get Job to really curse God and there's all these speeches back and forth so we're going to jump to Job chapter 13. Just flip until you get to the big 13 and it's verse 13 of that chapter. It says, this is Job, be quiet and I will speak. Let whatever comes happens to me. Why do I put myself at risk and take my life in my own hands? Even if God kills me, I will hope and trust in him. I will still defend my ways before my God. Even if God got it. Even if God took everything, even if God took my life, I will not curse God. I will only worship and praise Him and trust Him and put my hope in Him. That is the most important thing that I can do. He chooses this amazing attitude to have in all of this. He never loses faith. And then there's a lot more conversations between his friends and his wife. We're going to jump all the way to the last chapter of Job to see how this story concludes. Job chapter 42. Verse 12. Are you there? Good job. Big 42, little 12. So the Lord blessed the last part of Job's life more than the first. 
He owned 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. So all his possessions were given back to Job because he continued to trust God and his family was given back to him. And verse 16, the very last verse, 16 and 17 said Job lived 140 years after this and saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. Job was faithful and God continued to be faithful to Job. So we can learn, I hope tonight, to learn to be like Job even in the bad times. A good attitude or a stinky attitude attitude. Job kept that good attitude no matter what because we cannot base our attitude on the circumstances that are happening around us. If something happens, okay, and we have a stinky attitude, oh man, it's going to be smelly. Our life is going to be smelly and we don't want to be that way. I mean, if something happens to us, we want to continue to have a good attitude, not a stinky attitude. So this is what we're going to kind of do. Take a look at some godly attitudes. Good attitudes are poor attitudes. We're going to look at some videos and let's look at our very first attitude. And we're going to, at the end of it, I want you to go, woohoo! If it's a godly attitude or if it's a stinky attitude, I want you to go, P U. All right, so let's take a look. Hey, mom, I know we're about to eat dinner, but could I have a popsicle? <laughs> mom, why not? That's not fair. I want one now. What? All right, so what attitude was it? Was it woohoo or P U? Oh, P U, right? You don't argue with your parents. You obey what your parents say. All right. So second. Attitude, woohoo, RPU. Let's take a look. Oh no, I'm so sorry. No, no, it's okay. I knew it was just an accident. Was that a woohoo or a PU? It was a woohoo, exactly. It was a right attitude. Even though he tripped, he knew it was an accident, easily forgave them, didn't react, had a great attitude. Let's look at our third attitude. Cam! Yeah, Mom? Take out the trash, please. But I'm playing a game right now. Please do it anyway. But, Mom, I don't want to. Right now, Cam. Oh, so dumb. I have to do everything. That was his attitude. Woohoo! Or P-U. Oh, man, that one's an easy run. It was P-U for sure. That was a rotten attitude we don't want to act that way one more let's look at attitude number four i wanted to go to david's house but my teacher gave me a ton of homework but i can always go next week after i finish my homework woo -hoo! rpu that was a woo -hoo! what a great attitude a right choice even though he was disappointed even though he wanted to go to his friend's house he chose to do the right Thing and had a great attitude about it. So there's the differences between a good attitude and a stinky attitude. But how are we going to choose between those two? Well, let's look at point number one. What's it say? Bad days will happen. Oh man, oh, we're not going to avoid bad hair days. We're not going to avoid somebody being mad at us even though we didn't do anything. We're not going to avoid when days and everything about that day just doesn't go our way. But we're going to choose to be like Job and we're going to choose to be like Jesus. Listen, even followers of Jesus, okay, we have bad days. I know many of you have heard when I've shared Jesus and we're talking about accepting Jesus or we're talking about being baptized. And one of the things P. Rob says is as you accept 
Christ, accept Jesus into your life, that, man, I wish you never had bad days. I wish you never sinned. But we know that's not the case. There's evil all around this world. And there are bad days that will happen. But look at what Jesus says in John 16, 33. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Jesus said that because even Jesus had some pretty bad days. It's not easy. It's very easy to look in the Bible and see how the disciples turn their backs on Jesus. That would be a bad day. How about the, the day where they beat Jesus when he didn't do anything wrong and they put him on trial and they nailed him to the cross? Wow, worst day ever. Which leads us to point number two. You are, your attitude is your choice. It's up to you. Now, the interesting thing about the society that we live in and the society that you're growing up in, many people want to blame everyone else for what is happening in their lives and the choices that people make. They want to blame other people. And they even want to blame other people because they have a bad attitude. And all that is saying is you have no control over your attitude. If you're saying that such and such did this to me, so now I have a stinky attitude, you're saying you have no control over your attitude. But that's not how it works. The truth is, your attitude, my attitude, is our choice. It's no one else. It's kind of like the story where the little boy is in church and he wants to stand up in church and everyone else is sitting down so his mother's trying to make sure that he sits down and so, so he finally obeys and sits down but he turns to his, his mom and says I may be sitting on the outside but I'm standing on the inside yes he obeyed but his attitude inside was the wrong choice it was a stinky attitude we, as followers of Jesus, want to make the right choices that leads us to point number three. All we need to do is follow Jesus' example, which leads us to this week's Power Verse. Take a look. class. My name is Professor Buzzby McFly, and I am a bugologist, which means I study insects every day to determine what valuable lessons they might give us in order for us to become better Christians. Now today's bug is the stink bug. And just as its name implies, this bug is really stinky. Now the reason for this is Long ago, some scientists decided to do an experiment on regular beetles, where they forced them to eat nothing but Limburger cheese and Mexican food for two months straight. And their results were stinky. Then they took the bugs, extracted the gas, and filled up hot air balloons, where they started a new company for anyone willing to pay for hot air balloon rides. But I heard their business stunk. I think. Probably. I don't know. But what I do know is that the stink bug reminds me of today's power verse, which says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Philippians 2, 5. Bazinga! That power verse was superlative. Now, what I need is for all the boys to stand to their feet and say the power verse on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Philippians 2, 5. That was fantastic, boys. You may sit down. Now, all the girls stand to your feet and say the power verse on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. 
You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Philippians 2, 5. What an amazing power verse. You may be seated. Remember kids, no one likes a stinky attitude. And as Christians, our attitude should never stink. It should be just like Jesus Christ's attitude, which always smells good. Now, I need everyone to stand up to their feet and say the power verse on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Philippians 2, 5. Excellent job, everyone. You may be seated. Well, that's it for me. I'm back off to the lab to study another bug. Well, I'll be reading books like a bookworm and searching for articles on the worldwide spider web. Until next time, this is Professor Buzzby McFly. Bye! Philippians 2 5. Philippians is one of P. Rob's favorite books. And what does it say? That we should have the same attitude as Jesus. You think Jesus ever disrespected his parents? Mm, I don't think so. We know that Jesus didn't do anything wrong. Was he ever mean to his brothers and sisters or his friends? No, because we know Jesus didn't do anything wrong. And listen, even when he was beaten, even when they put him on the cross, he had a forgiving attitude. It says in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, Jesus says, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. They don't understand what they're doing and who they're doing it to. Please forgive them. Listen, this is not easy to do but we can do it with God's help. When we use the strength of God in us, the strength of Christ in us, when it's not our own and we give our lives to Him, He will help us to not have a stinky attitude, to make the right choices in the attitude that we have. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. First thing, as you, as you talk to God and allow God to talk to you, just, just tell God you're sorry when you've had that wrong attitude. And we know when that was. We know when we do not have a good attitude. Say you're sorry and then simply ask God to help you choose to follow Jesus' example. Ask God to help you not have a stinky attitude. Ask God to help you not to be a stink bug and to make the right choices when those circumstances come. Father, we thank you for Job's example. We thank you for Jesus' example and help us to use that as examples for us to follow in our lives. Help us not to be Steve Bugs. I'm here to tell you about my new virtual reality video game <laughs> called <Yeah>. Splat. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand the opportunity that they have whenever they look at themselves in the mirror and see how beautiful they is. What's up? I don't know where that The truth is, <coughs> the truth is a choking hazard. <coughs> hey God, can I order a pizza? Sorry, I needed to call somebody, so I had it on my phone, and I'm doing a Skittles video. Sorry. How do I turn this mug off? <laughs> that's, that's not bad. It's time for me to fly. I gotta fly. New heights in him. I have to breathe at some point. Well, listen, let me remind you once again, there's no teaching video next week. Our next Wednesday Kids and Fellowship teaching video will be August 26th. Okay? Listen, I love you. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. It won't be too long. Okay? Bye-bye.